Until the 29th of April, Pi Charm is available for purchase, 30% off, and all money goes to the Django Software Foundation. So I thought I'd make a, a quick video on how to download and get started working with Django with PyCharm. So head over to PyCharm. Um, uh, there are two flavors of PyCharm, so we can get the professional, which is the paid version, or the community. So the professional does come with a free trial, and that's what we're gonna be utilizing in this tutorial. If you were wondering what the difference is between the professional and the community, there is a nice comparison matrix here, which shows you the supported features of both the professional edition and free edition. And you can see it does, um, as you move down, run into a lot of different features and functions. Now, some would argue that if we were to look at all these features and functions and then go to Visual Studio Code, we could probably download a plugin which would cover most of these features that the professional option offers. And of course, there's counter arguments to that because for example, with PyCharm are developing this software with all these features already built in, it's likely or potentially it's likely that they um, will provide a better experience because everything is integrated and therefore more streamlined and potentially offering more features than relying on a person to develop uh, an extension for Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and download. I won't take you through the actual installation. Just go ahead and press next, next, uh, install, and I'll see you with the software open. While we're talking about downloads, it's probably worth noting that if you are in education, you can get a professional version of PyCharm for free. Uh, so it's worth exploring that. So it does look like I'm gonna take you through the installation guide, so you can skip ahead. So it should be a simple process here. I'm gonna use the 64-bit launcher, um, add the launcher directory to the path. Um, that's gonna need a, a restart, but that can be useful. Uh, create associations to pi files if you want to. Add open folder as project. Um, I'm not gonna do that. So let's just go ahead and install, and it looks like we're then going to restart, and I'll see you on the other side. Right, so after restart, let's go ahead and evaluate for free. Uh, so let's do that. Let's continue. Okay. So straight away, similar to Visual Studio Code, you can see that we do have a plugins uh, library marketplace, and I can type in Django, and there are a few options here, which I'm, I don't need to install. PyCharm will come with some great tools for us to utilize Django. Something that you might want to do straight away is customize. So there's some themes um, already built in here um, that you might want to use. And of course you can download more. Um, accessibility and key map, that's pretty much there. So projects, so let's go ahead and add a new project. So one of the biggest things to overcome starting with Django is this idea of virtual environments. Installing Python, uh, setting up your virtual environment, that can be a big step to take for new developers and the idea of doing that and the process of doing that can um, put some people off. So here in PyCharm, that all kind of comes built in and it's a little bit more seamless uh, for the users potentially. We can just press create, it's going to go ahead and build our virtual environment and set that up for us and we can just start building. So you can see here in PyCharm, we do have a dedicated area for Django, uh, for a Django project. So we can select that. There are some more settings here, a template language Django, template folder. It sets up a templates folder for us. Enable Django admin, yep. So we've got a few different options there. So here we can select the environment we want to use. In this case, so we're gonna build a virtual environment and then the location of that environment. Now. Whereas before, normally we make a, a project and we put our virtual environment inside that project. Here you can see it's going to be placing the virtual environment into different folders. And that might be something that you might want to organize when you're developing your project. There are some other options here. For example, this make available to all project. So you can create one virtual environment and make it available to multiple projects. And that can be useful for managing your virtual environments instead of building an individual virtual environment for every project. So here also it makes it easy for me to determine what version of Python I wanna use. So here I've got two versions of Python installed on my C drive, uh, 3.9 and 3.8. So I can go ahead also and select that. So let's just go ahead and use the defaults here and go ahead and press create. 
so you can see how easy that was just by doing absolutely nothing other than press create. I've got my virtual environment. I've got my Django project set up and ready to go. And I've got templates. So if I go into my Django project and settings, uh, let's have a look in my settings here. So there's not much going on in my settings in actual fact, oh, because I'm in the wrong file. That would be the case. But if I go in the settings, let's have a look. You can actually see it's already placed my base directory templates inside um, of my settings. And you can see in actual fact it's utilizing uh, the new approach um, from 3.1, Django 3.1, of using base directory uh, and not having to import the operating system, the OS, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we're all ready to go. So let's just go ahead and go into the terminal and let's um, run this manually first. Okay, so the server's running. And there we go. So literally within 10 seconds of pressing get started with Django, we now have our Django application working. And like I said, you probably appreciate that if you're new to Django and you've already gone through that virtual environment process of making it individually and manually, you can see how seamless this process is. So we don't actually have to type in anything here into the terminal. So if I just press this button here, run, you can see that that is just going to start the server for me in actual fact. So that's another great thing. So I can start and stop the, the server utilizing the tools that are already built into this software. So I can go ahead and customize my experience by selecting this drop down here, going to my edit configurations. And here, for example, I can, when I start the project, it can run automatically in my browser. I can change the port I want to utilize for this project. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, press apply and OK. Uh, so when I start now, it should open up the, the browser. There we go. And I'm now working on port 8080, for example. So that's a simple example. Now, there are 101, 1,001 different tools now that we could go through. I just wanted to show how to get started, how easy it is to start working with a Django project. Everything is laid out nicely for us. Uh, one of the features down here um, to do, this is a really cool little tool here. So we can add little to do lists um, or to do comments within our code. And then we can go ahead and kind of manage those and look for them within the current file um, or in the project, etc. That can be a useful feature. Like I said, this is just one of a thousand features that this tool offers. Um, but I just wanted to start with a quick start guide. Uh, hopefully that was useful and you can start running now with PyCharm and build your Django projects. So your next port of call is probably just having a play, trying to develop something or use your existing code, just have a look at some of the different debugging tools, etc. that it offers. Here would be a nice place to go. Go over to the quick start guide. This pretty much runs down all the main components that you're probably thinking about. If you want to utilize PyCharm and look at some of the features it offers. So for example, version control is something that is a very good tool that's uh, built in and works very well within PyCharm. Okay, there we go. So just a little reaction video uh, for those people who haven't seen this offer on Django. Again, I'm not associated to PyCharm at all. I'm not making any money from them. Um, it was simply something I just want to bring your attention to because PyCharm is an alternative to Visual Studio Code if you haven't already seen it and it's worth taking a look. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.